Congratulations! You just beat the tutorial of this fighting game. That means you now know how to play this video game. Thanks. What are you gonna do now? Cool, I guess I'll go play online or something. In the early days of gaming, developers couldn't afford to waste precious cartridge space on an in-game tutorial. Every bite had to go towards something that affected gameplay. So the most explicit that tutorials ever got was throwing some documentation in the instruction booklet and calling it a day. But with as simple as these games were, resourceful game designers were still able to use the systems and mechanics of their games to teach players how to play them as they were playing. The first Goomba in Super Mario Bros. 1 is often brought up as one of the prototypical examples of this method of teaching. It shows you that enemies can be lethal and gives you plenty of time to experiment with the controller to figure out how to avoid it or even how to defeat it. That single experience lays the rules and groundwork for the rest of the game from then on. So as video games have expanded in scope and scale, tutorials, for the most part, have kept up really well, doling out necessary knowledge and skills through methods that have been workshopped for more than 20 years. But the fighting game genre feels a little behind the curve on this matter. There's been some recent talk about whether or not fighting games are harder to learn than other complicated genres like MOBAs or real-time strategy, and I'm of the opinion that the preconception that fighting games are hard to learn come directly from the lack of good tutorialization for even the most basic of fighting games. Even tutorials that are considered to be the best in the genre still make some disappointing mistakes that can limit the growth of new players. So in this video, I'll go over some of my gripes with fighting game tutorials and highlight some of the ones that really bring something new to the table. I fucking hate tutorials, and this one is terrible. A tutorial's primary job is to bring you as a player from absolute beginner to being somewhat comfortable with a game's engine, system, and mechanics. Sort of like learning a language, you begin with learning the letters and syllables and then put them together to make words and phrases. And right off the bat, I see a big problem. This isn't really a problem with tutorials per se, but the problem of actually how user interfaces decide to show their information. I put a few fighting game novices to the task of playing through a few different fighting game tutorials, and something I noticed was a sense of confusion about which button did what. Every few minutes they'd need to recheck the options menu to remember their punches from their kicks. So my solution for this would be to just always provide the option to represent a button command with the label on the controller, and vice versa. So when you asked me to do something like a medium punch, instead of displaying this, the game would display this. This is something that Guilty Gear does really well, while another Arxis game, Dragon Ball Fighters, utterly fails at. And while we're on the topic of fighting game UI, I'd love to see more fighting games flip the input display when the player's on the right side instead of the left, as is the case with DOA 6 and Killer Instinct. There should be as little friction as possible to help new players understand the most basic mechanics of any given game. That's why most tutorials you see out there start with something as simple as push the stick to move. But unlike other video games, fighters tie special move commands to the same thing you use to move your character. One of the common complaints that I hear from casual gamers is that memorizing and executing special moves is an immediate problem when they're just trying to play the game. It's not memorizing ranges, frame data, or 50-50 setups, but the simple act of hitting down, down forward, forward, and punch. Even I, with more than 15 years of fighting game experience, still kind of struggle with charge characters because I've never been quite sure about how long I should charge a move for before it's ready to go. One way that I could see a developer solving this problem is by recontextualizing the physical motions of special moves. Have a player do something like change a car tire or something by throwing out a fireball motion and replace it with a half circle or something. UFC Undisputed 3 tried to do something like this with its tire flipping minigame, but that was confusing and it sucked and I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Point being that modern fighting game tutorials don't spend nearly enough time as they should explaining the execution of special moves. Just poke blindly at the controls until they let you go. 
even though they might be second nature to you and I, little Jimmy Fortnite will probably bounce off of a game if you can't even do the absolute basics. So that's probably worth thinking about. So teaching the base mechanics is an important and necessary step for any tutorial, of course. But there are so many fighting games out there that put in the bare minimum of effort into their instructional content, making you run down a checklist of attacks and mechanics with a presentation drier than M. Bison's playstyle. There's no repetition, no reinforcement, no reincorporation, nor any practical in-game reason why I'd actually want to do the things they're asking me to do in the tutorial. In other words, why would I remember something if I only ever do it once? There are a ton of fighting games out there that are big offenders of this particular sin, but I think Street Fighter V's character tutorials are among the most egregious, mainly because it was so close to getting it right. Every character in the game has these short tutorial sequences that show you what their special moves are and what they're good for. In the case of Ryu, they tell you about his Hadouken, tell you what it's used for, and then a recording of a CPU plays that shows all four strengths of his fireball. And then... the game moves on. This feels like a massive missed opportunity to let the players try the moves for themselves and maybe even figure out how to use it in a real game situation where, I don't know, you're throwing fireballs to keep Zangief out and if you let him get too close he pile drives you or something. In other words, Street Fighter V's tutorial content for the most part is simply non-interactive. If you want an example of a tutorial that teaches the basics well without sacrificing interactivity, try Skullgirl's Second Encore and pay attention to the little things like the way the movement tutorial gives you plenty of time to assess a slow moving threat to move out of the way of danger, the blocking tutorial that forces you to guard against increasingly more intricate block strings, and the hit confirm tutorial that makes you combo into a long lasting normal and only wants you to follow up with the next step of the combo only when the previous move connects. But as you and I know, learning the basics of a fighting game is kind of like dipping your toe into the Mariana Trench. That's because while it's easy to explain how to throw a fireball, it's a whole other problem to explain why you want to throw that fireball in the first place. And this is the great riddle that so many fighting game developers try and solve. When you get into the theory and advanced concepts of fighting games, you begin to understand that blocking is probably the best thing you could do in the majority of situations, or that zoning isn't just spam and that there usually are real ways to beat it. But this is much harder to explain in a few short minutes because, as the great Seth Killian once said, you can lead a scrub to water, but you can't make him think. Footsies and spacing and set play and good defense and situation recognition all come with a lot of fighting game experience and quality practice. Fortunately, these are all transferable skills from one game to another, and that's why I'll always applaud the fighting games that go out of their way and at least Make the attempt to teach these valuable lessons instead of simply telling you what you could have otherwise read on the marquee on the arcade cabinet. But with that said, I did play through a lot of fighting game tutorials in preparation for this video, and I noticed that the primary difference between a good tutorial and a great one had less to do with the kind of information presented and more about the pacing and presentation of that information. When a player wants to learn a new game, usually they'll be directed to the tutorial. This is a great opportunity to introduce the personality, story, and attitude of the world, and I simply don't see enough fighting games take that chance. Guilty Gear Zerd's sign was able to present their tutorial lessons with a little preamble of Soul Bad Guy and Scene Kisuke jabbering back and forth with each other. I thought it was a cool little addition that added to the world and added to the experience, and I definitely missed it when they didn't do something similar in Guilty Gear Zerd Revelator. Sai told me my, like, Combat basics suck, I think. Something about bread, maybe butter? But something that Revelator did better than Sign, and what it does better than almost every single fighting game in history, is the absolutely brilliant pacing of its tutorial. During the tests with my fighting game deficient friends, Revelator's tutorial scored high, high marks for keeping the action varied, offering objectives different from every other tutorial that I had them play a logical progression in both difficulty and reintegration of previously seen tasks, and, for not, and this is a big one, boring them to death with too many back-to-back -back lessons. Return to Minion. 
I want to see how long this tutorial is. I think it's something ridiculous like 20 lessons. Oh my god, no! <laughs> it's so much! It's so much! Too often, defining game tutorials front load hundreds of tasks without considering to add a break every so often. One thing that doesn't help is the reliance on text that these trainers use to convey information. And the longer a tutorial goes without taking a breather, the easier it is to simply skim or skip that text that you so desperately want the player to pay attention to. There are too many tutorials out there that also allow beginner players to stumble upon advanced tactics that they probably won't need until they've locked the basics down. Taking another example from Guilty Gear Sign, that tutorial has about 50 lessons and shows you stuff like dead angle attacks, a rainbow's worth of bursts and roman cancels, and the risk system all in one straight shot, all before teaching you something as basic as mashing out of a stun. Revelator, on the other hand, breaks those more advanced tactics away from the more basic tutorial, which only teaches you about movement, attack and defense, one kind of roman cancel, and basic combo structure. That allows those advanced tutorials to get more love and attention in regards to the way that they're presented in-game. And when you give a player too much information too soon, you run the risk of making your game feel like homework. And homework is boring, and boredom is the enemy. But you know how to fight that enemy? You fight that enemy by making a tutorial that is, at its core, fun to play. I personally had a blast with Killer Instinct 2013's tutorial because Along with a solid presentation, KI's combo system is so freeform and exciting that you can't help but enjoy pressing buttons while the tutorial tells you what to do. Guilty Gear Reb 2 hits you with a set of mini-games after the main tutorial that teaches you even more cool mechanics outside of the context of fighting. And while Super Smash Bros. doesn't necessarily have a direct tutorial outside of a simple how-to-play video, Side games like Home Run Contest and Break the Targets can do a magnificent job of getting players accustomed to the abilities of a game's roster. And the fact of the matter is, just like having a great teacher in your favorite subject at school, it's way easier to learn something if you're actually having fun learning. And ultimately, I think that's what all too many tutorials in fighting games get wrong. It's disappointing with as much progress and evolution in game design over the last 30 to 40 years, the great majority of fighting games haven't figured out how to be engaging and fun while they teach you how to play them. And you know, I think the solution for this problem is out there. I play games like the Yakuza series that gives you a deep skill tree that's unlocked over the course of hours so you're gradually introduced to more mechanics and stronger attacks as the game gets tougher. I think about Mario Kart DS, which managed to take a pretty strict set of mechanics and made a mission mode that taught you how to be a better driver. Or even something like Fortnite, which recently added computer-controlled bots to low-skill games to give even the most novice of builders a fair shot to stumble their way to victory. The point is, with as many incredible tutorials and progression systems that are out there, fighting game developers should look to these for advice on what to do in their game. But there definitely, once again, are good fighting game tutorials out there. I could gush for hours about what Guilty Gear Zerd 2 does right, like its lessons on character-specific matchups and how to punish seemingly unpunishable moves, or Fantasy Strike and its Netflix-style video series that teaches you about every character in the game, from their strengths to their weaknesses, and the countless efforts of fighting game community content creators who make hours of videos and hundreds of pages of documentation so that anyone, no matter the skill level, no matter the game, can find techniques that work for them. But there's still work to be done. I don't think I can pinpoint exactly what about fighting games seems impenetrable to a casual audience at large, but if better tutorials throughout the experience of playing a new game can help, well, I'm all for it. Next month, I'll be taking a look at Google Stadia, Google's brand new video game platform, and I'll be looking at it with a critical eye through the eye of a fighting game player. I'm looking for local multiplayer, I'm looking for online latency, and I'm looking for controller choice. If there's anything else that you'd like me to look for, uh, or anything you'd like me to mention, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you for paying attention to this video for the last um, 12 to 13 minutes of your life, and I'll see you soon. Also, please support me on Patreon!